Is this my favorite 4080? Hey, what's up? John Shred here. And today I am reviewing this Gigabit 4080 Eagle OC. I'm gonna compare it to a couple other 4080s in the same price range and find out and help you better understand if this is the right card for you. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, uh, I like to review new tech and, and share my thoughts with you and, uh, and yeah, kind of make a channel out of it. So uh, I was recently given some feedback to uh, a recommendation to change from 24 frames per second on my recording to 30. So this is my first video at 30 FPS. Let me know in the comments if you noticed the difference. Some people were saying that the 24 frames per second was a bit choppy. Now, normally I would start reviewing a card with an unboxing, uh, but that is not the case. I ended up trading uh, my Founders Edition 4080 for this Gigabit Eagle a few weeks back, and my friend promised me he would give me the box. I'm still waiting. Although I'm sure the box is lovely, uh, we'll just we'll just move forward talking about the card. So this is the first Eagle card I, I reviewed on this channel. Um, it's Gigabit's entry-level GPU line comparable to an MSI Ventus and kind of an Asus Tough. I would maybe put the Asus Tough more on a, a mid-tier versus entry-level. Uh, but this is the OC variant for $40 more expensive. Uh, there is also the, the non-OC. Now, either way, this is pretty much one of the cheapest 4080s you will find. Now, does that mean it's junk? Not necessarily. Now, let's talk price. This card used to come in at $1,279 USD, but they've recently had a price drop to $1,239 USD. Now, comparing it to the other cards out there, uh, there are a few that are cheaper, uh, closer to the $1,200 mark, such as the 4080FE. Now, as I said, this is the OC variant. I'd love to hear what you think about the OC variants that are popping out for an extra 40, 50 bucks. Is it worth it to you to get a slight pre overclocked megahertz boost? Or do you think it's a waste of money and you'd rather just buy the non OC version and use the slider and overclock it yourself? Let me know. When it comes to design here, let's take a peek at this. Let's do the nice up close, right? Um, it's blocky, chunky, uh, it, it reminds me a lot of the Asus Tough um, versus I mean, the Zotac and the MSI have started to add kind of some curves to it to, to switch it up. The Asus Strix is also kind of very, very blocky like this. Now, does that affect the performance at all? No, not at all. I'm just kind of interested in seeing something a bit different. And I mean, most of the time your card is mounted like this anyway, right? Unless you're in vertically mounted, uh, you don't get to see the fans and you're kind of just stuck with this, with this top panel. And size wise, it's very similar to all the other AIB 4080s out there that I've looked at, uh, the Zotac, um, and even the Strix 4080, they're, they're very similar size. The Zotac and the Strix are, are maybe 10 millimeters longer. Sure, uh, once you're getting this big, they're all big in my opinion. Uh, the 4080 FE is slightly smaller. Uh, so if you are looking for something, a 4080 solution for a smaller case, maybe the FE is for you. I will post uh, some footage. I just did a, a Zotac 4070Ti uh, review. You can check out the video here. Um, but I had these two cards side by side so you could see the difference. Uh, they definitely drastically decreased the size for the 4070 Ti. Now I am impressed that uh, Gigabit did put a BIOS switch. You can see that at the bottom there. 
OC and silent on this card, uh, being that is you know the lowest end card, I, I really didn't expect that. Uh, Zotac didn't put one on their their 4070 Ti, um, but I mean maybe because it's just it's all the 4080s already may have it. Um, what does that mean to you? I mean you can flip between the two BIOSes to get different profiles. It also means you're in a better position if you want to try and put a different BIOS on this, possibly an Aero. Uh, or even uh, an Aeroris uh, Master Elite BIOS, see if you can flash it. I have no idea if that's doable, but I mean, in the MSI world, um, I have a, a 4090 Gaming Trio here that I've seen a lot of people put Supreme BIOSes on. So, I mean, can you do similar things? If, if you know where have you done it with an Eagle to raise maybe the, the power draw, um, the power limit, uh, let, let me know if that's doable. But the fact that you had the switch uh, means there's an extra level of safety. If you mess up the flash, you can always revert back to the other one and hopefully uh, save the card. Speaking of power draw, uh, this card comes with a standard three eight pin adapter, which I have since lost. Uh, I, I don't recommend using adapters. You've probably heard lots of issues with the fire. It's actually more the connector itself. The adapter doesn't make a big difference. Just make sure you really plug them in securely. But I do recommend getting a dedicated cable uh, instead of using the adapter. I've been using the really nice Corsair 600 watt one with my RM1000X power supply. Or other than that, you could get one and customize one from uh, cable mods, which I highly recommend. No, this video is not sponsored, but it could be. This card has a, has a soft power limit of 340 watts and a max power limit controlled by software of 400 watts. Now, that's much more than the, uh, what do we have here? The Zotac was in at 320 watts and it only went up to 352 versus the Strix, which I mean, Strix is a different price point, different ball game here, but it starts at 360 watts and goes up to 420. So the fact that this is a entry level card and it still meets in the middle as far as the ability to draw additional power is pretty cool. Now, does that make any difference? Stay tuned and find out. Okay, let's let's get this card installed. Uh, here's my, my Lian Li 11 DXL case that I have. Uh, let me grab that, we'll put it, we'll slap it in and, and we'll see how it fits. Whew, okay, uh, this case is way too heavy. I cannot wait to sell it. Um, at first I thought it was it was the greatest thing. Um but yeah, it's just, it's really big and heavy. Yes, I have a distro plate in here uh, and a radi an extra radiator and some, and some fans, but it's still really, really heavy. So here, let's slap this card in. Okay, uh, as you can see, it, it fits really well. Uh, it's a monster case, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Still a solid two and a half inches on the side here before it's the distro plate. Um, yeah, I mean, from what I've noticed from, from all of my reviews, the 4080s and 49s are all similar size, which plays into also the thermals, which is pretty cool. So here, let me turn this on. So yeah, I mean, when it comes to lighting, there's not a whole lot to see. Just get to kind of kick a bit, and there's a there's a kind of a, a a line on the bottom. It reminds me a lot of the tough line for lighting. Uh, the lighting itself is controllable through the RGB Fusion software made by Gigabit. Um, there's a couple of preset options, and you, you can you can play with the colors, but uh, nothing nothing super crazy. I recently had someone uh, drop a comment in one of my videos asking about the noise level of a card. And I hadn't really considered doing a section about it in, unless I saw something that really stood out. Uh, if you saw my video, my Asus 4090 Tough video, 
uh, there was definitely some coil wine, which I wanted to capture that and, and share with you. Uh, but I said, why not? Let's, as going forward with new vi videos, uh, capture you know some, some decibel meter, meter levels so you can better understand is it a loud card or not. Here you go, Tob Tob Fawn. Tob Fawn. I recorded some audio levels uh, while playing Warzone 2. There's a bit of footage here. You can see my ambient room sound was I don't know, 45 decibels to 50. When I started playing the game, uh, it went up to 55, 60. There's also the spinning up of my all-in-one cooler that's happening at the same time, so it is hard to tell which is uh, noise, but overall noise, I don't think it went over 60 decibels. That's with the side of the case open. Uh, I assume if you, you close it up, it probably wouldn't be an issue. Um, really with this card, I didn't really, a normal fan kind of spinning up sound, but but I think it's great. Now, if you have any recommendations for me for my videos on how I can improve them, improve them whether it's 30 frames per second or adding noise level, please leave a comment down below. I'm always open to positive criticism and how I can help grow my channel. Now, if you're enjoying this, please leave a thumbs up. Okay, let's jump into the benchmarks of this card. Now, I've had it in my system for a few weeks now and primarily playing games such as Warzone 2. Have you tried out the, the DMZ mode versus the Battle Royale? It's, I'm, I'm trying it out right now. It's kind of fighting more against NPCs. Anyway, I'm finding it very challenging. It, it's, it's pretty fun. You should, you should check it out. Anyway, here are the numbers on how it compares to other 4080s in the same price point. So nothing really surprised me here with the numbers. It performs very similarly to the Zotac 4080 or the 4080 Founders Edition. When overclocking, I mean, it, it does help uh, quite a bit. Uh, and, and I mean, what I've seen with most 4080s is the overclock potential is there. If you watch my 4070 Ti video, overclocking did barely anything. The overclock settings I used on this card, I was able to get plus 250 megahertz on the core, bringing it right up to bang on at 3000 megahertz. And then I was able to do plus 1500 on the VRAM, bringing it up to 12,700 12, megahertz. Now, when we talk thermals for this card, as I mentioned, they're huge. Uh, all of the 4080s and 49s are doing extremely well. And in my Heaven 4.0 benchmark, it didn't even go, it was like low 60s for both the Core and the VRAM. Uh, no issues at all for thermals. You can run this day thing all day long. So, to conclude, is this my favorite 4080? Not in the slightest. Uh, I mean, it's ah, kind of boxy, minimal, basic, with only a little bit of RGB. You know I like the RGB. I'd much rather have Zotac's new kind of fun design. It performs as expected, but I mean, it's a $1,200 GPU, I mean, that's kind of the bare minimum that at least it does its job. There's there's really nothing wrong with the car, it just doesn't amaze me. I mean, if you were to get your hands on one, would you be disappointed? No, I don't think so. Like I said, I've been using it now for, for a few weeks and it, it's great. Is it exactly what I expected for an entry level 4080 from Gigabit? Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, you cut some corners uh, with some lighting. Uh, it, it's simple, but you get it cheaper. In the end, you're still getting a 4080. And I'm curious, I mean, what 4080 are you looking at? And are you comparing it to the Eagle, maybe the Eagle non-OC version? Or is there something else out there, you know, like the MSI Ventus that, that is more uh, if you're an MSI guy? Well, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, leave a comment down below if you have any questions and uh, stay tuned for the next one.